And every living thing, including man, every living thing belongs to every other living thing. And I can never be what I ought to be until the last living manifestation of life is what it ought to be. For better or for worse, I am tied into the idiom of everything that lives. And if I, if I forget this, I profane God's creation. If I remember it, I come to myself in you, and you come to yourself in me. question in the book about this about this country uh, very very much interested in fact he said it to the Thurmans that maybe it'll be through African Americans that the world will know and learn the uh, way of nonviolence Fellowship Church became from Dr. Thurman his great experiment to see if through the church the common ground could be achieved. It was the living out of Dr. Thurman's vision that he said he and Mrs. Thurman had or shared at Kyra Pass when they were returning from their visit with Gandhi and that was to see if they could create some kind of fellowship where people could come together regardless of background and have profound religious or spiritual experiences over a period of time. And he felt that if they had those kinds of experiences, those experiences would be enough to break down any barrier that existed. Well, it was important because it was the first interracial church in the United States. <laughs> now, that means interracial in both administration and congregation. You felt uh, a real sense of community and a sense of working against what was going on in wartime in San Francisco. He was going beyond what one would learn in Sunday school in a traditional church and asking us to think through 
our own humanity and our own purpose and our own relationships with God and with our fellow men. There is a spirit abroad in life of which the Judeo-Christian ethic is but one expression. It is a spirit that makes for wholeness and for community. It is the voice of God and the voice of man. One ticket. I'm sorry, I did not choose to sell you a ticket. You do not choose to sell me a ticket? Is this because of my race? No comment. No comment. Thank you very much, sir. One of the things uh, I studied at Howard University in the seminary under Howard Thurman was the work of uh, Mahatma Gandhi in India. Thurman uh, urged me to read more about Gandhi and books written by Gandhi and to study his movement because uh, uh, it was possible that such a technique, nonviolent direct action, uh, could be adapted and applied in the United States. Dr. Thurman was a uniquely significant figure because he taught leaders spiritual insight. Can I be admitted? No, sir, we, you cannot be admitted. Why? I am not going to serve you because of my race. I am not going to serve you because of my race. Move on. In many ways, the great principles of our civil rights struggle to be a transforming force in America, not just a modifying force, certainly not a, con a conforming force, in part was driven by his insights. We still feel that we are right and that we stand uh, within our constitutional rights uh, in the protest. We still advocate nonviolence, passive resistance, and still uh, determined to use the weapon of love. Now, and while Dr. King credits all of his philosophy with that of Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi, a lot with Howard Thurman as well. And we are still insisting emphatically that violence is self-defeating, that he who lives by the sword will perish by the sword. Now, I have been told that Martin Luther King always had a copy of Jesus and disinherited with him. This is an astonishing book. Howard Thurman comes along and says, Jesus' gospel is a survival kit for people whose backs are up against the wall. That is, that folk who are being oppressed and persecuted for no reason that they have given, simply because this is oppression, um, are told by Jesus, do not imitate the oppression that you face. In, in doing that, you harm your own life more than anyone else. I don't want the niggas going in that school. Well, huh? It's a white school. See, we are human beings, and we are not stopping now till we get something that's better. He's got the whole world in his hand. One of his premises was that we must have a spirit that refuses to die, a spirit that is more profound and more fundamental than the culture, the politics, the economy the race, the skin color, the gender, a spirit that refuses to die. He had said, when you reduce your irreducible essence, and then nothing else, no clothes, no stuff, no cover, you're still somebody. You're still God's child. But as life, that's hope. 
but there's hope, there's infinite possibility. All men are entitled to the blessings of liberty, yet millions are being deprived of those blessings, not because of their own failures, but because of the color of their skin. So let us close the springs of racial poison. Let us pray for wise and understanding hearts. Let us lay aside irrelevant differences and make our nation whole. Thurman was a resource in the sense of reminding us of the wholeness of life. He was with the movement, but in a very different way than Martin was with the movement, or that Fannie Lou Hamer was with the movement, or that Ella Baker was with the movement. He was with the movement as a manifestation of this wholeness that he believed in so deeply. And he recognized that what the movement was doing was not simply trying to get laws passed, but trying to bring a new wholeness to American society. And anything that is working for wholeness, from his perspective, is working for the divine. Howard Thurmond, I think, represents uh, some of the best in America. I constantly refer back to the work that's been done by Dr. King, Dr. Thurmond, and, and others who've, uh, whose shoulders really I stand on.